We're going to build a robot that can shoot nerf darts out of the air, something kind of like this. Sensors track a nerf rival round as it flies through the air at 100 feet per second. Software predicts where it'll go, plans an interception trajectory for the round, and a robot shoots it out of the air with a pellet. This is an incredibly hard engineering problem. It involves journeys through robotics, computer vision, machine learning, circuit design, and more. This is the first part in the series, so feel free to subscribe if you want to follow along. There are a bunch of things that make this problem difficult, and we'll dive into them in detail, but here's a quick taste. First, 100 feet per second is fast, like really fast. This is how long it takes a nerf rival round to travel 10 feet. Here it is again in slow-mo. On top of that, since this round is only 22 millimeters in diameter and this pellet is 6 millimeters in diameter, we can only be off target by up to 8 millimeters in order for a successful shot. Now that might not sound that difficult, but because of how fast this round moves, it'll travel 8 millimeters in 250 microseconds. That's 600 times faster than the average blink of an eye. That also means that the aiming and firing mechanisms need to be super precise. In fact, some parts of the aiming system need to be accurate to less than half the width of a human hair, but we'll get to that in more detail later. Originally I was going to build the whole thing and then make a video about how I did it, but I thought it might also be interesting to walk through the whole process as it happens. Before diving into the project, let's take a look at the overall parts of the problem. We need something that can track a nerf dart in midair and predict where it'll go, a very precise way of synchronizing timing and communicating across the whole system, and something that can very precisely shoot a pellet. Generally, I try to start with the parts of a project I know the least about. This helps avoid surprises later on in the project. I have some background in object tracking and low latency systems, so we're going to start with the firing mechanism. I want to build something that can hit a nerf dart that's anywhere between 5 and 10 feet away and anywhere from 0 to 10 feet off the ground. It should also be able to move from the top of that range to the bottom of that range in 200 milliseconds. Now these numbers are kind of arbitrary, but there's enough wiggle room there where I can make the problem easier if I need to. Like I don't actually need to be able to hit a nerf dart from 10 feet away, but it would be really cool if it worked. Also, just to note, I don't want to let the firing mechanism move sideways because code has bugs and I don't want to build something that could accidentally hit me. Let's go build the firing mechanism. I started by researching a bunch of different ways of knocking a pellet out of the air, including jets of water, jets of air, and a bunch of other things. After a while exploring, I decided to try shooting it out of the air with a pellet because it seemed like a good mix between complexity and likelihood of being precise enough. I designed several ways of firing a pellet, and here's a simplified model that walks through the idea I decided to spend more time on. We have a spring, a piston, a cylinder, a nozzle, and a barrel. Let me reinforce this a little bit, and then we'll walk through how it works. Cool, so if we pull a piston back, we can see that the spring gets compressed and wants to push the piston back into the cylinder. If we let go of the piston, we can see exactly that happens. Now if the spring were stronger, there would be a burst of air that would come out of the nozzle and push whatever was in front of it, a pellet, out the barrel. Now I could build something like this for real, with reload mechanisms, a stronger spring, and all the other necessary components. But it turns out that this mechanism is pretty similar to what's inside these uh, electronic pellet launchers. There's a whole industry dedicated to building and fine-tuning these, so it seems like a good place to start. As a quick aside, when working on experimental projects, there are two things I generally find helpful. The first is to start with stuff I know the least about or have the most uncertainty on. And the second is to treat everything as hypotheses and find the simplest way of testing those hypotheses. Over time, the ideas you test become more and more complicated until you end up solving your overall problem. So with that in mind, the first thing we're going to test is what happens when a pellet from this launcher hits a nerf rival round. Let's find out. Plastic pellet versus nerf rival round in 3, 2, 1. Great. What I expected to happen did happen. Simple experiments like that are useful for validating assumptions. If something else had happened, like the pellet getting stuck in the nerf round or the pellet going through the nerf round, that would have had big implications for later stages of the project. So it was important to test up front. The next thing to do is to figure out if this pellet launcher is precise enough for what I need. It doesn't matter how well the rest of the project works if this launcher isn't precise enough. So I want to bring up a distinction between precision and accuracy. Precision is repeatability, so if you fire several pellets, they should all go to the same spot. Accuracy is that the pellets go to where you want them to go to. 
So an example of precise but not accurate would be a launcher that always fires pellets two feet to the left of where you want them to go. The good thing is we can fix that by applying a constant offset to get a system that's precise and accurate. So how precise do we need it to be? Well, since the overall system has plus or minus eight millimeters of leeway, the pellet launcher itself needs to be much more precise than that. So kind of arbitrarily, I picked plus or minus one millimeters at a distance of 10 feet as a target. So I started with some simple tests by hand, firing at a piece of paper 10 feet away, just as a sanity check to make sure we were kind of in the right ballpark of a system that could actually do this precisely. That looked reasonable, so the next thing we're gonna do is put the launcher in a vise and fire at a piece of paper again. That removes any imprecisions caused by my hand holding the launcher. We're also gonna test at a distance of five feet instead of 10 feet, until we actually get precise enough where we need to measure at 10 feet. If we look at the vertical shot grouping, we can see that it looks reasonable, but it's not quite as precise as we'd like. There could be a bunch of different things causing it, but we're gonna start by focusing on one, me manually pulling the trigger. That could be introducing variability into each shot, and by fixing that, it'll also give us a more repeatable test platform to make more improvements with. We're gonna convert this launcher to electronic firing using a microcontroller. This means I'll be able to launch pellets using a computer-controlled system rather than manually pulling the trigger. This also pushes us in the right direction because it's something we're gonna need to build anyway if this works. In order to convert one of these to electronic firing, we're gonna need to understand how it works, so let's take it apart. Cool, let's walk through how it works. So it's actually pretty similar to the Lego model I showed earlier. We have a spring, a piston, a cylinder, a nozzle, and a barrel. You can see if we pull the trigger, it pushes the switch forward. The switch connects the motor to the batteries and that causes it to turn. The motor turning turns this gear, which turns this gear, which turns this gear. That gear pulls the piston back against the spring, which would be here, and lets it go at a particular point in the firing cycle. That causes the spring to push the piston into the cylinder and force a burst of air out the nozzle and into the barrel. One interesting thing I want to note is how this launcher fires one pellet at a time. To give you a better view, I'm going to remove the piston, the cylinder, and the barrel. This gear train actually has more jobs than just pulling the piston back. It also pulls back this piece at the end of the cycle. This part is responsible for turning off the switch once a pellet has been fired. One other interesting thing I want to mention is this device right here, which goes between the nozzle and the barrel. This is called the hop-up. It puts backspin on a pellet as it leaves the launcher. So that's kind of how it works. When you pull the trigger, it turns on the switch, which turns on the motor and pulls back the piston. And when the pellet's fired, this piece gets pulled back, which turns off the switch. Based on the teardown, we know that the launcher works by turning on the motor when the trigger is pulled and turning it off at a particular point in the cycle once the shot has been fired. The problem for us is that in the launcher, all of those mechanisms are mechanical. So if we want to convert it to electronic firing, we need to know when the shot has been fired. Now there are several ways we can do that, including putting an encoder on the motor so we know exactly where in the shot cycle we are, or putting a touch sensor or hall effect sensor on the built-in semi-auto mechanisms so we know when the shot cycle is complete. I decided to go with a different approach and built a laser tripwire that lets us know when a pellet has left the barrel. It's pretty simple. The way it works is we have a laser diode that shines a red laser into a photodiode. So this is a sensor that produces a current when light hits it. So by shining a bright light into it and interrupting the beam, we can know exactly when the beam was interrupted. By building a simple circuit that lets us connect this to a microcontroller and putting it in a casing that can go in front of a pellet launcher, we can build a simple system that tells us exactly when a pellet left the barrel. I made a little housing out of foam that can house the photodiode and the laser, and it sits right in front of the pellet launcher. 
Great, so now our microcontroller knows when a shot's come out of the barrel. All we need to do is figure out how to turn on and off the motor. That gets kind of tricky too, because these motors draw a lot of current, and we can't run them straight off our microcontroller. That's where this comes in. This is called a MOSFET. It's kind of like an electronic switch. The microcontroller can turn off or on another circuit without that current flowing straight through the microcontroller. So that's kind of the overall approach. The microcontroller turns on the motor inside the pellet launcher and leaves it on until a pellet exits the barrel or until we hit a safety timeout, and then it turns the motor off. This should let us fire one shot at a time, and also keeps things safe in case parts of the circuit don't work. I said the word microcontroller a bunch of times, so I figured it was a good idea to talk through what they are. They're basically just tiny computers that can communicate with other pieces of electronics, and you can write software to control them. Here's a sample of some of the ones I have laying around. As you can see, they come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. Most of the ones I showed you are Arduinos, but there are a bunch of different types of microcontrollers. With that, I'm going to put together the initial version of the circuit, write some software, and then we'll be back to test it. So I built the circuit, and this is kind of what it looks like. We have our power supply, which is capable of powering the motor inside the launcher. We could have used the battery that came with it, but this doesn't need to recharge, and it's easier to integrate with our circuit. We have our laser trip wire in front of the barrel. Uh, this is the circuit that we talked about earlier, and this is the microcontroller that I'm using. It's connected via USB to my laptop, which is what triggers it to launch a pellet. A quick note on safety, I tested all of this extensively off camera, and I built in a bunch of safety features. Please don't do this unless you know what you're doing. With that said, let's go ahead and test it. I'm going to be triggering shots off camera with my computer. Before looking at the shot grouping, let's talk about a couple things first. Some of you may have noticed that the launcher we've been using has changed a couple times. The reason for this is that the launcher we took apart had plastic gears inside, and those gears stripped, making it not work anymore. This launcher has a metal gearbox, which makes it more robust. The mechanisms are mostly the same, with a couple key differences. A really important one being that this launcher has a piston that moves up and down, instead of horizontally. This could be affecting our shot grouping, but let's take a look. As we can see, most of these shots fall vertically within two grid cells, with a few outliers. Each grid cell is a quarter inch, which means most of the shots fall within a half inch, including the width of the pellet. If we do the math, that means each shot is within roughly plus or minus 3.35 millimeters of the center line. Since this isn't a super precise way of measuring, we're going to drop the 0.35 and say most of our shots were plus or minus 3 millimeters away from our target. A previous test off camera put us at plus or minus 2 millimeters away. Either way, we're pretty far away from our goal, which is plus or minus 1 millimeter at a distance of 10 feet. There are several things that could be causing this, so let's talk through a few of them. The first is that the barrel could be moving up and down on each shot. The second is that the velocity could be different on each shot. And the third is that the spin could be different on each shot. My guess is that it's the movement of the barrel that's primarily causing the issues that we're seeing. I did the math, and it turns out that the velocity changes that would need to happen in order for us to see the effects we saw would need to be pretty drastic. But it turns out that a 1 millimeter movement at 10 feet away is equal to a 33 micron movement of the barrel. That's less than half the width of a human hair. That makes me a little more confident about digging into the barrel movement as the source of the problem. It also means that velocity likely isn't what's causing our issue. But before putting in a ton of effort to fix it, I want to make sure it's actually the problem. So what's the simplest way to test that the barrel is moving during the shot? Measuring super small quantities isn't easy, and I went down a rabbit hole of looking at techniques to measure small quantities, like laser triangulation or laser interferometers, and a bunch of other things. They were all either expensive, finicky, or hard to build. So I started thinking about why none of these approaches were super easy. Well, it turns out they're all trying to do one thing, which is be compact, but I don't have that restriction. 
So after thinking for a while, I realized we can exploit the exact thing that's causing our problem in order to measure it. If we put a laser diode on top of our barrel and point it at a wall 10 feet away, that means a 33 micron movement of the barrel is going to move the spot on the wall by a millimeter, which is pretty easy for us to measure. I did just that, and as you can see, the laser dot moves a lot. So I'm pretty comfortable saying that the primary source of this problem is barrel movement. We talked about a couple things that could be causing that, including vertical movement of the piston inside this launcher, but we're going to pause on that for now and focus on our measurement capabilities. So the approach of launching pellets at paper isn't particularly sophisticated, and it makes it kind of hard to see where the pellet actually hit. On top of that, the paper can tear and we lose some information that way. It would also be good if we could collect data on each shot without me having to manually move this between shots. Let's talk through some approaches that might let us do this. We need something that can measure a small object that's moving extremely fast. The pellet that comes out of this launcher moves at 210 feet per second, which is significantly faster than the Nerf rival round. It's also much smaller, at only 6 millimeters. Let's talk through a couple different sensors and see if they're a good fit for what we want. Fair warning, these sensor descriptions are going to be pretty high level and aren't true in the general case, but they help illustrate some of the trade-offs for this particular decision. The first one we're going to talk about is an ultrasonic sensor. This one also has an optical sensor in the middle, but we're going to ignore that for now. The way these work is by sending out pulses of ultrasonic sound and timing how long it takes to get the echo back. Based on that and knowing the speed of sound, you can figure out how far away your target object is. Unfortunately, this type of sensor isn't particularly ideal for what we're trying to do, for a couple reasons. The first is that the object we're trying to track is small, and lower end versions of these sensors don't do a great job at that. The second is that sound comes out of these sensors as a cone, and distance sensitivity at different spots on that cone is different, which means we might not get as precise of a distance reading as we want. This is an optical time of flight sensor. It basically sends out pulses of light and times how long it takes for them to get back. We can apply a similar concept using lasers to get a much more directionally aware sensor. These are called laser time of flight sensors. With that approach, we'd basically be shooting a laser straight up, and when the pellet intercepts the beam, we'll see the reflection and we can figure out how far away the pellet is. Unfortunately, that has a couple problems, because if there's offset to the left or to the right, the pellet might miss the beam entirely. So we need something that's forgiving on horizontal position of the pellet, but can still very accurately measure position. I did some digging into some solutions for this problem, and one of them is kinda ridiculous. So next time, we're gonna be building a camera flash that's brighter than the sun. Feel free to subscribe if you wanna watch that video when it comes out, and if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.